My name is Cedric Givart. I'm a consultant haematologist, basically a blood doctor, and I run a research group at the University of Cambridge. Um, we are based at the Cambridge Blood Donors Centre and part of the uh, Cambridge uh, Stem Cell Institute. My group's research focuses on uh, growing blood cells in laboratory to transfuse to uh, patients. Uh, we do this work in collaboration with other groups, including um, a group based at the University of Bristol. We were interested to know what members of the public would feel about this new emerging technology and therefore we went out there and asked what questions do you have for us and we are trying to answer those questions today. So there are three different uh, type of blood cells. The first are the white cells. Now the white cells are the guardians of the body. They will protect you against viral and bacterial infection. Platelets are the smallest type of blood cell but not the least important. What they do is to facilitate blood clotting. So if you injure yourself or if you damage a blood vessel they will plug the hole. And finally the red cells, the most abundant of the blood cells, there are 60 million of them in each of uh, blood drops, carry the oxygen around. And what we have to bear in mind is that uh, the blood system is very dynamic. These cells will live for, in the blood for a short period of time, so we're constantly producing new blood cells to replenish the one that have ended their life. So blood transfusion come in two main types. One is red cells and the other one platelets. Now, we need to sometimes give a blood transfusion because either the red cells and or the platelets are too low. And there are two situations when that might arise. The first is when the patients are losing blood. They've had a trauma or they've had extensive surgery and they've lost red cells and they've lost platelets. And the other moment is when the bone marrow, which produces all the blood cells in the body, doesn't function very well. And there are two situations where the bone marrow doesn't work very well situations where the patients have inherited a disease from their mom and dad. For example, sickle cell anemia is a condition where there is a lifelong need for blood transfusion because the sickle cell patients cannot produce red cell in, in the right way. The other situation is when the bone marrow doesn't work very well because of an acquired problem. One of them is cancer. And for example, leukemia is a condition where cancer cells live in the bone marrow and they stop the normal blood cells from being produced. And finally, cancer therapy. Chemotherapy in particular is especially toxic to the bone marrow. And quite often when patients are receiving chemotherapy for cancer, then we need to give them a blood transfusion to recover the blood count. So today all blood transfusion relies on voluntary donations. So that's sometimes then difficult to match the demand coming from this population of donors. And that also goes with the fact that uh, an increasing demand for transfusion um, because of the aging population, because uh, the treatments are more and more advanced, especially in the context of cancer support. And there also was another dimension for that is that for some people with special conditions like sickle cell disease or inherited platelet deficiencies, getting a specially matched blood group product is very important and that's again very difficult to get it from the general population. And maybe the last aspect of it is the fact that in the developing world there are a lack of good infrastructures to deliver safe blood product to the population. So for all these reasons actually, growing uh, blood cells in the lab in a much more controlled way and with the capacity to scale it up and to very precisely select for a given blood group would be actually ideal to overcome all these challenges. So we basically uh, produce these lab-grown blood cells from uh, stem cells. So we use very carefully controlled lab environment to do so, to mimic the body conditions. And the stem cells are actually quite extraordinary cells. They have this unique property to proliferate a lot, to so give a lot of cells in uh, culture dishes and they also have this extraordinary power to, to become, to turn into any type of uh, cells from the body. And that's, we use stem cells because we actually cannot use any cells coming directly from donations uh, to grow them further in a culture dish. 
tests do done so far in the laboratory um, on lab-grown cells show that they do behave in a very similar way to donor cells, which is really important because we need these cells to behave in the same way so that when a patient is transfused with them, they will receive the same benefits as they would from donor cells. However, these cells haven't yet been tested in humans. Um, so the next step would be to start small-scale clinical trials, which we hope will happen over the next few years. Um, this will involve using a small volume of lab-grown cells uh, transfused into volunteers, um, and that will give us the real answer as to whether or not they behave the same. While we expect lab-grown cells to functionally behave the same as donor cells, there would be certain differences. So for example, donor blood cells um, are a mixture of new and old cells which have been produced by the body, um, whereas lab-grown blood cells can be produced on demand um, and used more quickly for transfusion. And this might mean that the cells are in an earlier stage of their life cycle, meaning that they will last for longer in a patient's blood um, and offer more benefits to those patients. So we are actually using stem cells to grow our blood cells in the lab because they have this extraordinary potential of, of growth. Uh, but we are not using any stem cell type. We are using a very special type which is called pluripotent stem cells. That's a recent discovery actually. And the pluripotent stem cells are obtained from its skin biopsy which is obtained from after informed consent for, 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 for the donor and they are turned in, in the lab into these so-called pluripotent stem cells which have this potential to grow indefinitely in the culture dish and have also this extraordinary potential to give any cell type of the body. In terms of transfusion medicine, we expect that the lab-grown cells will be used in exactly the same way as donor cells. Um, so red cells used for anemic patients and platelets used for patients that have a risk of bleeding. However, in terms of basic biology, these cells would be really useful for scientists that are really trying to understand how these cells are made um, and other aspects of their biology that might be related to certain diseases. Uh, and in the future, there's even the opportunity that we could supercharge these cells so that they would actually perform more efficiently for patients. There's potentially quite a few advantages of using lab-grown cells over donor cells. Um, the first would be that they can be produced from a safe known source. That means they're less likely to transmit infectious agents such as the HIV virus. And that's particularly important in certain regions of the developing world where access to safe blood is still a huge issue. Lab-grown cells could also be used to produce um, cells for patients where it's actually very difficult to find a donor currently. We also have the potential to manufacture these cells to be universal, meaning they could be used by anybody uh, without running the risk of rejection. Although we've made major breakthrough in producing red cells and platelets in the laboratory, what we haven't done at this stage is to produce them on a very large scale. And to be able to replace blood donation, we would need to make that crucial step. So we're clearly not at that stage yet. The other thing to bear in mind is that growing blood cells in the laboratory is very expensive. And therefore, it would be unaffordable at this stage to replace all donated blood products through products that we produce in the laboratory. So at this stage, no, we will still need blood donors to come into the blood center and to give us blood cells so that we can carry on our transfusion program. Well, so let's define first what is a clone. So cloned cells, actually cells coming from a single cell or a single individual. And in a way, our body is doing that all the time. Right? We generate a lot of cells from single cells. Um, so strictly speaking, yes, the blood cells made in the lab coming from a prepotent stem cells derived from a single individual are cloned cells. However, I would like to make the distinction with uh, reproductive cloning, like in, for instance, with Dolly the sheep. That will never happen with the type of cells we are growing in the lab, and the blood cells we are growing in the lab. That's for two good reasons, that the process we are using are radically different, 
from what has been used to clone the ship. And the second good reason is that the red blood cells and platelets, which are used for transfusion, do not contain any DNA, so they cannot grow further cells. So the research laboratories who've developed the technologies to produce blood cells in the laboratory are actually actively engaging with commercial companies to bring those products to the clinic. And the reason is that to be able to produce the cells on a large scale so that we can distribute them around hospitals, we will need serious investment. And we will also need manufacturing know-how and aspects of work that can only be done by commercial companies and not in research laboratories. And I think that's why the link between academic groups like my group and the industry is absolutely crucial so that one day these products can truly be delivered to the clinical point of care.